what's going on folks? Welcome to CV Made Simple, the channel made specifically to make your transition into the cabinet vision world simple and easy. My name is Spencer Baker and I am your host. Today, we are gonna be talking about machine integrations. Now more and more often I've been having conversations with various shops around the country that have told me they're utilizing cabinet vision, they're extremely happy, they're cutlass thing faster than they've ever done, but they're still struggling to keep up. And the first thing that I always suggest to any of those people is to get into CNC manufacturing. It's never been easier to do it. You can get very simple machines, as you can see right here. This is my personal machine. Very simple, very easy to use, and you can utilize cabinet vision to do it. Now, before we can integrate your machine, we need to know a little bit about you and your shop first and foremost. Assuming you're starting at absolute zero, meaning you haven't learned cabinet vision at all, the first thing we would need to do is get you some software and start training you and setting up your construction methods. The most important thing for all of this is that the cabinet vision software is constructing cabinets the way you actually want your cabinets to be constructed. If they're not, then it's just gonna be garbage in and garbage out. So first and foremost, we wanna make sure that you're trained up and that you know how to put together the cabinets the way that you actually want them to be put together. So let's assume you're already in that category. You're utilizing cabinet vision to its fullest potential with just core and cabinets. Maybe you've got reporting and shaping on there or just the optimizer. Either way, you are able to take your drawings from design to construction because your cut lists are accurate and you already know that. That's a phenomenal help for us. From there, we will want to know what machine you're getting so that we can figure out how much time it's gonna take for us to connect everything, test it, and ensure that it is ready for manufacturing as soon as we hop off the call with you. Some of the questions that we might ask could include what manufacturer is your machine? Do you have tool changers? If so, how many tool changers? Does your machine have a drill block? Do you plan on printing labels at your workstation so that you can slap them directly on the parts so that you'll know where it needs to go in your shop from there to keep track? Now we've created a very simple way to get all this information to our various technical and sales departments so that it doesn't have to feel as stressful to you. The link is down below and it will take you to our machine implementation worksheet. Here's where we will find all of the data that we need to ensure that we can get your machine up and running as quickly and efficiently as humanly possible. So I just wanna take a second and run through that worksheet together so that we can answer any questions that you might have during this video. So now we will go directly to our Cabinet Vision Machine Implementation Worksheet. If you didn't know, the link is located down below or you can reach out to your sales rep if you've got some more questions about that. A lot of these fields will be required, so keep that in mind. Just for the sake of this example, we're gonna go with Bob's cabinetry. Primary contact is Bob. Email address is bob at bob.com. So we'll just walk through this a little at a time. You'll go through your cell phone number and all of that. All of this information is specifically so that we can know who is going to be available on the day of your machine integration. All the information we're asking for here is gonna be helpful to us because we're trying to tie everything to your specific account. Same as business address, yes. The implementation personnel is who is going to be present for the integration. If you're the owner of the shop and you run the machine, you can be the point of contact on here. If you have a machine guy, let that person be the point of contact. We'll need to know their name and their role. We're also gonna ask which version of the software you are currently using. Now the oldest version of the software that we can use is version 12, which means we will integrate version 12, 21, 22, and 23 as of this video. But don't hold me to that go online and see which versions are supported at the time of your integration. Same thing with the workstation operating system. Windows 10 and 11 are our preference. Is your cabinet vision installed on a network version? So what this means essentially is you have standalone versions and you have network versions. 
The standalone versions are all on their own. So if you have two employees with two standalone licenses, they won't be sharing the same settings at all unless you make an effort to split those between the two. If they're on a network version, however, all of their settings, all of their jobs will be stored in one location, either from a server or from a host computer. It's important for us to know that because there is a different process for our installers on network versions versus standalone licenses. Is machine code stored in a shared folder? Same thing along the same lines. This is along the same lines as the network install question. Are permissions set appropriately on the shared folder to allow reading and writing from the workstation and machine? We'll go ahead and say yes. What machine type are we integrating? We can integrate with routers, point to points, beam saws, drill and dowels, chop saws, material and handling systems, as well as various other machines. But for all intents and purposes, let's just say you are integrating a router. That's gonna make the most sense for us. The rest of these have a much less arduous process. That's why I wanna take you through the router first. We need to know your brand. Let's say you're getting a Laguna. Smart shop. Now, if you don't know the serial number to your machine, that's totally okay. You can leave that blank, as well as the controller name and controller model. Now, if you're curious what the controller is, it's the computer that actually runs the machine. So we're going to generate code that will then go into that computer, which will control the machine, telling it what to do. Different manufacturers use different controllers, so we like to know which one we're working with specifically. Is this a new machine? We'll go with yes. Are you utilizing any CAM software? For instance, are you using AlphaCAM or VCarve or any other software that you've already got integrated into your machine? If you do already use a CAM software, that's extremely helpful for us because we know that there's G-code that we can use that is already run on your machine specifically. We'll need to know the number of router heads, the number of tool changers if you've got them, the machine distributor, machines are us, contact name is Bill and his phone number. All of this is really doing is helping us to know who to call if something goes wrong, if we have any questions. We'll hit next again. Is the current release of Cabinet Vision installed and properly working? Is the software operator familiar with the operation of Cabinet Vision? We'll just walk our way through all of these questions. Will the software operator be available during the implementation on an as-needed basis? Yes. Is Cabinet Vision producing accurate cut lists? Yes. Has the machine operator been trained on using the machine? Will the machine be available during implementation on an as-needed basis? Is your machine currently on site? Yes. Is your machine currently installed? Yes. If the answer is no to this question, that's totally okay and not a big deal because we can still start this process. But what we'll want to know is roughly when you think the machine is going to be installed so that we can time our technicians to arrive after the installation with the machine rep. The machine rep is going to want to take some time to teach you about the machine before we can teach you about how the software interacts with said machine. The next question is about machine components specifically. Does your machine have multiple tables? That's not very common, but it does happen. Multi-drill heads, yes. So if your machine has a drill block on it that allows you to drill multiple holes at the same time, we'll need to know a little bit more information about the specific schematic of how that machine sets up their drill blocks. If you can access the actual schematic from your machine rep, that will obviously be the most helpful tool for us. But if you don't have that, we need to know specifically which tool is going to be the 00, zero reference tool, which tool numbers are assigned to each spindle, what the offsets are between each spindle, and the orientation of the heads of your CNC machine. For me, the thing I always recommend for my customers to do is to snap a picture of the drill block from below. This can give us a really great idea 
of what the layout of your drill block is and we can ask follow-up questions from there. This form itself doesn't ask you to submit anything specifically during this form. What it will say is that you have checked off that you've identified all of these options and then once you find that schematic you plan to email it to mps-post-processor.am at hexagon.com as soon as you figure out where to find that schematic. Next, does your machine have a saw head? Does it have aggregates? Does it utilize auto loading or auto unloading? Does it involve labeling or a fourth axis? And does your machine have any modified components? Now the reason we're asking for all of this information is specifically to know how much training and integration time you might need for your specific situation. Some machines are simpler, some machines are more complex. Some people are getting a lot of tools that they've never used before. So we wanna know specifically what you're using so that we can determine how much time we plan to sell you. The final page is specifically about G-code for your machine. Now, following back up on the question of whether you have CAD CAM software already integrated with your machine, it can be extremely helpful for us to get some examples of G-code that have successfully been run on your machine. The simplest way that I tend to explain G-code is that it is the translator between the software and the machine itself. So whenever it comes out of cabinet vision, it will have a line of code that essentially tells the robot where it needs to go, what direction, how deep it needs to go, how many holes it needs to drill. All of that information is stored on the G-code. This can vary from distributor to distributor, and in some cases, it can even vary from machine to machine. We need to have this G-code so that we can compare our post to the existing post that you're using so that we can make sure everything is going to run correctly and we won't run into any issues. So we always ask that you send us examples of G-code that is run on your machine showing every operation that you plan to utilize with your machine. If this is something you can find on your own, that would be fantastic. If not, contact your machine rep and they should be able to either provide you with the G-code or to test the code in real time when they install your machine. If you're not sure where to find G-code or how to make G-code, contact your machine rep, let them know what we're looking for, and they should be able to help you from there. And once we've gotten through page 10 and you have clicked yes, that you will submit some G-code to mps-post-processor.am at hexagon.com. Whew, that's a mouthful you can hit submit right there. Your response was submitted and you'll be contacted by Hexagon personnel to begin the scheduling process soon. Now this form will go directly to our scheduling department so that they can get the process going on scheduling your integration. But if you haven't taken care of the software side of things, you may need to speak to your cabinet vision rep first. In terms of software, if you're starting at absolute zero, you'll need the screen to machine center and a router post. Once you have the screen to machine center and the router post, you will be able to communicate to machines and you'll be able to communicate to your router specifically with that post. The post will be customized to your machine specifically, so if you have multiple machines, you may need multiple posts. In addition to the screen to machine center and a router post, you may also need some training time. This training time can be used to help set up your software so that it has the construction methods that you need to get your machine running the way you want it to run. And you'll need some integration time. Now this integration time will depend on how complex your machine is and how complex your router post will be. If it's a simple machine like mine, it may be able to get done in around four hours. But if it's a more complex machine, say it's got auto load and auto unload, it has a labeling center, it has a drill block, all of this is a factor and something that we wanna keep in mind. So between one and three days is about the average time that we use for an integration. If you have additional questions about that, as always, talk to your sales rep and they should be able to help you. It's a relatively simple process if we have all of the information that we need up front. And if you need help looking for the information, you can always contact your sales rep or your machine rep, and they should be able to help you with everything that you need. If you've got any additional questions about integrations, or you're curious who your sales rep is, 
feel free to shoot me an email at cabinetvisionmadesimple at gmail.com and I'll make sure we get you the help that you need. Thanks and have a great day.